and we'll roll the old printing press along. We'll roll the old printing press along. We'll roll the old printing press along, and we'll all hang out in time. Well Howdy folks, it's Johan, your favorite little ink blob, back at it today with a little more Celeste. Um, I do apologize, um, I, uh, just received, uh, <laughs> a call from a friend. I suspect it was an accidental call since it hung up, but, uh, if I get another one, I will need to pause a moment and, uh, deal with that. But yeah, how is it going, everyone? Oh, right, that triggers Oh Shiro. Also, man, why? Is this louder? Is my volume louder than it normally is? Because it sounds louder to me. Um, <laughs> we'll be all right if the, st if the stream, yes. Johan fun facts, what about him? Fun facts about what? About Johan, or? <laughs> um, Microsoft is removing the control panel. Uh, pardon F? That seems... Terrible. <gasps> oh, we were gaming out of our minds for a moment there. But, so, the control panel that, you know, gives you a lot of access <laughs> to uh, things that you need to know about your computer? That would be awful. Fun fact, lingo is 20% G. Like, the letter G is 20% of what's going on in lingo? I mean, I've, I've not done a statistical breakdown on the answers, but I don't know, perhaps it's that biased. However, I know in English, I believe that E is the highest frequency letter at 20, it's like 27%, and I think E is the second most at 17%. Oh, in the singular word lingo, I see. Windows 12 is releasing next year? Oh god. Guess who's probably going to get accidentally upgraded despite all of their best efforts? <laughs> that was what, our second, third attempt? Something along those lines when we've been trying for a while last stream? Hot damn. <laughs> Just de-bloat Windows 11, Johan. Duh. Hmm. Truly an OS... <laughs> An OS Pyro moment. Ah ha 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 An OS moment. Oh, by the way, just, uh, just briefly, um, a little, it's going to de-bloat me, but I'm so cute. Uh, wait, hold up. Uh, it's gonna look weird because it won't have the proper blank background, but, act oh, wait, no, this will do weird overlaying, but, uh, look at cute little pumpkin hon! I mean, very bloated, but look how round and hide. There we go. Um, but yeah, um, just briefly, uh, heads up, uh, you may notice that, uh, the stream should have, actually, wait, hold up, let me, does it have the label? Yes. So, we have the political and sensitive content label. Um, <laughs> Now this is this is this is for two reasons. And now so this is a recent label that I know has been making the rounds on social media because it finally filtered down to me. And if something filters down to me on my own stuff, uh that uh means that it has made it through a lot of rounds. So uh Twitch requires content labels for uh content that may not violate community guidelines but may not be for all audiences. We yap about a number of things, including personal experiences, we've had long conversations about religion, uh, gender and sexuality, we've talked a little bit about politics and whatnot. Not ever, like, espousing particular stuff, but the, uh, category label, which has been re recently introduced, seemingly into, uh, seemingly in response to some of the stuff about, uh, <coughs> uh, how people have been talking about, uh, like the Israel-Palestine conflict, um, is quite inclusive and includes topics like gender and sexuality. So we're playing Celeste, the, you know, the trans game, <laughs> at least the one that we talk about as being that quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, that I believe technically all Celeste streams, if they're going, <laughs> if there's going to be any, any even jokes about that, I think technically, uh, are supposed to have that. 
I do not think that's a fantastic thing, but I'm putting on the label because uh, I will follow the guidelines uh, and also sort of point out that, wow, that's really, really goofy. Um, the trans guy. Well, I know not the, but yes. Also, hey, welcome in, Carsey. Sorry. <laughs> How's it going? Chicken <laughs> Chicken Carsey? Oh, <gasps> my god. I mean, you know, if I'm going to be made some sort of poultry dish... Actually, I guess... Of course, you would probably want that to be chicken, because, you know, that's one of the best kinds of poultry. But, but, oh no. But yeah, so, I mean, that label's not just here because we are playing Celeste. Uh, we will keep that label around because we, you know, sometimes have... We, we like to be able to have uh, fairly mature conversations about life and such. Um, so, uh, that's going to stick around because apparently... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Twitch wants that labeled, and I think that's perhaps a bit goofy. Um, just a bad misspelling of chicken curry. Uh, oh, I can see that. Chicken carry, chicken curry. Oh man, now I just want curry. I, okay, I have a lot of like, um, I've got a lot of like distaste for sauces. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I, barbecue sauce and, like, ketchup were things that, even though they're, like, mostly sugar, um, <laughs> I, I could not, I, as a kid, I just, I, I couldn't with them. Um, I'm, I'm better now, I've seen the light. Um, but as a result, curry was something that for the longest time, I, I, I wouldn't even try curry. I tried it, like, two, three years ago, I went, oh my god. This is so good! It's just butter with spice! So, big, big curry fan at this point, even if I was not for quite some time. Um, I should have been there. I wish I could have been, but Amori! <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> Marie Curie was not French. <laughs> um, sorry, that was the Polish in me. Um, Wait, I, in fairness, I don't actually know her national origin, but like I can, I can somewhat, I can somewhat understand with like Curie, maybe thinking that it was French, but hey, welcome in, Alyssa. Ugh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, she's Polish. Okay. <gasps> Ascent. Thank you. We flip. Much appreciated. Um, it's funny because I. <laughs> For some reason, I watch the stream for when I flip, so that's actually very desynced. But welcome in. Glad to see you. How's it going? I know, different Alyssa color. Ain't that fancy. Hope things are well. Continuing to pelt me with pennies. Ooh. Suddenly wondering if I could do some sort of, like, on-screen animation of being pelted with pennies. Oh! <gasps> We did the thing. Um. I'm pink, but Timotheus wouldn't tell me if I had pink or not. Oh, no. I mean, pink is good. But I can, I, I can understand uh, trying to simplify things. Pink is lovely, though. Um. Ba, ba, ba. Anyways, Johan, uh, about Robert. Uh-oh. Oh, hope he's all right. Um. Pink is cool. Yeah. Oop. But yeah, no, uh, currently Alyssa, like, sort of, I, I guess maybe like a, a, a ruddy orange. Tim ate Robert for breakfast. Oh, dear. I feel like there's not a whole lot of meat on a stick figure. Oh, he said bo bad things in Baba server? Uh-oh. Well. I feel like I am not as surprised as I would like to be, but... Oh! Oh, interesting. So, rhythm room with the doorbell. Weird. Gonna be geometry dashing? Nice! Uh, what are you currently dashing on? Ding dong. 
<laughs> Whoa! <laughs> hey, welcome in, Tim. Welcome in, Raiders. How is it going? Ding dong! Kicking down the door. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Waha! Hey, welcome in, Diamond. Welcome in, Ollie. Welcome in, Silver. We entered without knocking. Well, that's fine, because we're about to try and press the doorbell ourselves. So, you know, it, it all works out. <laughs> I mean, to the best of my knowledge, there aren't, like, a whole bunch of vampires uh, that we've got here. So I don't think you need to be invited into the, thresh the threshold, but, like, who could? Yeah, Threeb is almost done. Like, isn't that exciting? Uh, you know, spend like an hour on one room and then do it within uh, like three tries uh, <laughs> when you pick it up again after a week. And thank you, we will indeed hydrate silver. Perfecto. Oh, hey, and a new Marsh convert potentially? Good job, Carsey. Um, here's the cool epic, definitely climactic story. Uh oh. Does it have something to do with an excess of the word baballs? What were you saying? What were you saying? I don't know in particular. But Yeah, Ding Dong, Sonic Wave Rebirth. Oh yes, that was it. Right, because Geometry Dashing, so Sonic Wave Rebirth is the name of the level you're doing? Um... I'm guessing then? <coughs> People in Bahamas server actually love- Well, I did see the cute little- Taking it so that they're like Baba balls, so it's like a little orb. Um, the balls were actually <laughs> okay. Yes, fair enough. Uh, what did one French man say to the other? Uh, I, I don't know. Hon hon croissant. Um, oh pengu. Oh, that would be awesome. But uh, no, don't know. You don't speak French. You know, fair point. Yeah, but you can't even like parrot the words. You know, I feel like I should know more French because I I I know at least two piece, pe bleh, two people who are not fluent but speak at least an amount of French, but I have not picked up like any. So extreme Bob is you and Robert were having a friendly conversation about parsers. Okay. That does not seem inherently problematic. No! We were so- oh my god! Oh, okay, so this is the heart room. We're literally almost done with Threeb. Je veux détruire le monde. I feel like that is perhaps not something I should have said. Um... <laughs> Me not actually knowing much French. Your diamond painting a wolf in a suit will probably be done tonight. It's night here. Your diamond painting? What is diamond painting? Is that like the geometric shape of a diamond? Or. Ro Robert struck with the message of TBH, most parsers aren't the, that original since they're just text variants? Oh? <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> Never make me say anything bad. Of course not. Hold up. Uh. Taking what? Oh, this! Oh, oh, this feels so weird. I put, I put my controller on my leg because I'm searching things up, uh, and oh, it's it's got the like feedback, so it's just like weirdly pulsing, like a heart beating. That feels really strange. Oh, I do not enjoy that. <laughs> It's like a little paint by numbers, but instead of paint, it's a little plastic gem you glue in place. Oh, nice! Sticking little gems on a diamond canvas or sticky canvas is made little art paint. Oh, that's super cool! That's awesome! That's super cool. Um. Well. Only thing I'm not seeing any I'm not seeing a bunch of people laughing about that French phrase, but I did turn up an article by Marine Cornel with a weird snake painting, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> I 
can't remember if I've been to Pengu stream before. I think Pengu, if I remember correctly, Pengu stopped streaming a while back, is my understanding? Because I know we I know we talked a little bit um, about that, uh, about Pengu when, because Pengu first came in when we did the Infinite Craft stream, and we were chatting a little bit there. Um, went, went for, bleh, ba, 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 ba. no, don't glue them, the glue is on the canvas already. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. One, uh, to one for five minutes or so. Oh, doing the little, the little, like, uh, diamond, the diamond painting things. And a picture from both of them is awesome. Yeah. Would love to see how shiny, um, made huge canvases. Awesome. Hey, welcome, Nobo. How does it be? Um. Now it starts outrage from them after everyone said uh, after bleh, outrage from everyone after Robert claimed that parsers aren't that original. Now, in fairness, could you clarify to me what you mean by a parser in this context? Um, because well, I'm I'm assuming like a text parser, but are are there separate Baba text parsers, or I assume that's kind of just built into the game. Um, lifts logic, etc. The stuff in text plus. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold up one moment. Now I know. <laughs> now I know my, why my friend called me. It's because uh, they found some chocolate that uh, we were trying to find uh, for my mother. Uh, <laughs> In a place that you would least expect it. Um. So okay, okay. So the the outrage, the outrage. Um. I cannot t I cannot tell where without re potentially revealing things about my location, but uh, I I guess I guess what I can say is they are visiting a place that ha is known for. Uh, a particular religious denomination that apparently has access to chocolate that we don't have where I'm currently at. <laughs> so, hell yeah. Um. So, what the F is a text variant? You don't make a variant of text, you make new parsers. Okay. I recently binged I'm in Love with the Villainous. It was, uh, is a romance anime you see. I was watching it very calmly, and then episode 3 hit me with the gender talk. They talk about how people are attracted to it and other people. It's surprisingly nice, and they just do it this one time. What? Interesting. Um, oh, no, no, no. No, th this is, this is uh, a chocolate that I'm not 100% sure if it's been discontinued or not, um, but it seems to be, and you, you know when, like, something is at least small batch or whatnot, how people will, like, buy a whole bunch of it and then resell it on, like, third-party selling sites. That's, that's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. Um, gonna study for getting your driver's license soon. Yeehaw! The books are on their way. Nice! Yeah, driving is really, uh, it's a very nice option to have. Um, so, amazing, Ollie. Um, trying to think if I've got, I mean, like, I don't know a whole bunch about driving in Netherlands, but, uh, you know, be responsible. <laughs> Pay attention to the road. Uh, don't text and drive. Um. But yeah. Um. Yeah, it's I. Honestly, driving is a an activity I'm very fond of. Um. So I I uh, I'm I'm the type of person that likes to actually volunteer to drive. Um. <laughs> never text. Have no friends. Hey. Well then, don't Twitch chat and drive. I guess. <laughs> late to school today because car accident boo you are not oh yeah no just other folks um okay sorry then you make a new parcel that has absolutely zero relation to anything that's been previously made i think that's just a text <laughs> yeah i can understand that um oops it parses it's similar to text clearly an uncreative idea bob is you making fun of Robert. damn i mean yeah like the the thing is ultimately like if people put work into something no, no matter how you feel about that, <laughs> people put work in, so, uh, I think people can get justifiably heated if you're a bit dismissive of that. Pro tip, collect the switches? I'm working on it! We even got all of them at one point. 
the other license so I can drive my dad to the hospital when he needs it. He is a, a heart patient and drives himself now when no. Oh man, yeah, no, absolutely. Being able to drive folks who you know have potential medical stuff. That's man. Um, my grandfather has. Um, he had a really weird like brain event. Um, oh man, it's been like a year and a half. Um, ago, and he loves to drive, but it's one of those things of like, one, once you've had one time where, like, it, it seemed to be temporary and he's doing better, but it's also one of those things of like, if someone has had a thing happen in their brain that was like very sudden onset, they probably shouldn't be operating heavy equipment. Um, but he loves to drive. Um, so I, I really want to figure out how I can like, go drive him around a little bit, but he's not, like, in my COVID bubble, so it's one of those things of, like, I don't have a lot of good opportunities to do so, which makes me sad, so still working on that. You know, what are you talking about? He's talking about, so, yeah, it's uh, apparently, apparently Robert was a bit dismissive on the, of the concept of a text parser in the Bob Accord. And uh, some of the people who made said parser had some strong feelings. Yeah, it's clearly a text variant. Looks similar enough. <laughs> um, yeah. Dad also wants me to get out of the house more and he will let me use his car. No, uh, okay, I, I, see, I see the little tear on that. But no, genuinely, that's awesome. That's, I don't, I don't use my car for that enough. Um, because again, like COVID precautions and... When, when basically going anywhere is, like, a conversation, um, where it's like, I need to be hyper aware of what I'm doing to make sure that, like, I don't need to, like, immediately go into, like, a two-week quarantine, add some barriers, but, like, having a car so you can just go, hey, I'm going to drive to a park, and I'm going to enjoy said park. I'm going to just find different scenery for a while. That's awesome. Um... And that, like, so that's even if you're not, like, immediately jumping into, like, social events, just going outside and being where you can sometimes even see other people can make huge differences, and sometimes you'll meet folks. I'll go to secondhand stores more? Yes! That's, I actually, I need to, I need to go to a thrift shop, um, because I'm trying to, I am someone who has never done a whole lot for, like, personal fashion. Meat, Meat Han does not have a sense of style. Meat Han has clothes that have been functional for the past several years. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm trying to mess around with it a little bit more. I've got two friends that are very lovely and trying to help me understand, like, things that I enjoy and maybe, like, a little more comfortable in, but are still, like, a little stylish. Um, and so I've got some thoughts, I've got some opinions, I'm armed with them, but I have not been able to convince myself to go out to a thrift store. Um, so, uh, yeah, need to do that. It's, I probably, I probably need to, um, I should probably just hit one up on, uh, like, the way back from work one of, one of the days I'm working, but just demo here somewhere, <laughs> SMH my head. I don't know how! So what, just because it refers to things, it's just... <laughs> Okay, that was nice. Bomb. Bomb. No! Misjudged that. You're back. Huzzah! <laughs> Ease. She lives the other side of their coat. The city, yes. Um, yeah, no. Just driving to see friends is nice. I mean, for me, un unfortunately, a lot of my... A lot of my friends live, uh, a fair drive away. Um, better than the other side of the country. Imagine, imagine if it was more than just a country away. Um, yeah. Um, or, or imagine if it wasn't within the country. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it is good to be able to actually, like, transport yourself to see friends. I, unfortunately, unfortunately, my friends, yeah, are all... They're all outside of, like, day trip strike distance. I used to not drive much, but now I drive to school every day and it saves me an hour of travel on a fully packed bus. Yeah, fair play. That's, um, uh, yeah, no, that's, buses, buses are neat. I, I, um, I didn't use them for a while because I, <laughs> so li little insight into the psyche of Meat Han. Uh, little baby Meat Han 
was the kind of like rule, rule follower that went, oh, if I've been told to do a thing or not do a thing, I will continue to do or not do said thing until someone notices. Um, so when I was very young, um, I was told like, oh, you know, you can't like ride buses on your own or anything or like you can't cook on the stove. So it took until I was like my mid teens to be like, hey, I'm really like, I keep having to microwave stuff that I think I could easily do in the pan. Like, can I use the stove unattended? And my parents were both just sort of like, why wouldn't you be able to? Well, because when I was four, you told me that I could. Similar thing for uh, like buses. It took me until I, I think I think it was either like 15 or 16 where I finally went like, I'd really like to go volunteer at this like genealogical society. I can't get there on foot. Can I like take the bus? Um, and they're like, um, of course you can take the bus. <laughs> Why is that a question? Yep, you work that way too. Ayo, yeah. So it took it took a while, but yeah, ended up ended up uh, doing bus routes. It only had, I think it had like two transfers, but. I don't know, it was nice. Um, it let me actually go, like, volunteer, uh, who was scanning obituaries in newspapers, and it was a lot of fun. And I don't think I ever really met anyone on that bus, but it was just like, I don't know, it was pleasant. I, it's, it's kind of nice to just, like, sit there and have, s see everyone sort of cycling through their commutes and whatnot. Um, oh, and school pays for gas, hell yeah. That's, okay, that's awesome. Um, response to Robert's second message. Wow, just, wow. I cannot put into words how infuriated I am right now. I think that's, I think that's reasonable. Congratulations, with one sentence you have stripped away all meaning and uniqueness of these parsers, reduced the combined work of so many people down to just text but different. Congratulations, Robert's Discord username, you insulted five people at once. Wow, yep. That's a, yeah. It's, it is, it is one of those things. Like, I, I, I try not <laughs> It sucks that that happens, but I, I hope that helps Robert learn a little bit more about being careful with language. And hey, welcome in Aku d and How's it going? Welcome in. We are currently threebing in Yappin. Um, we're apparently on the last room, but we'll see if we actually make it today. But how's it going? Um, same with drinking Coke on a weekday. Wait, what? I skipped something. Um, oh, oh, things that you couldn't do a while. <laughs> right, so, okay, so Coke only on the weekends. I Coke the drink, Coca-Cola. Um, pretty good. Resort B? Uh, uh, 3B, so yes, I, I guess that's resort. I always am terrible with the names. This is my first playthrough of Celeste, so. We, we, we just call it Threeb. Um, <laughs> but yeah, glad it's going well. Welcome in. Um, still don't swear in front of your parents even though they do. Oh no, my my parents, mo most of the swear words I learned were from my mother, so <laughs> that that one uh, that one uh, was you know out the window. With the exception with the exception of bastard, I learned from my grandmother. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, the f word was because I I went through a phase as a child where I liked to like swap the first letter of words and we were playing some sort of like I, I think it was a card game um and there was an I, I drew an eight and I didn't like the eight so I was trying to say like yucky eight but I decided uh, instead of a Y I'll go with an F so, which which so when little baby meat Han said ah fucky eight um <laughs> this was to be clear, also a game that was being played with my uh, grandparents that were visiting, uh, who the, my 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 mother's parents. So uh, that uh, <laughs> turned into a conversation, but that's how I learned that word. So kind of taught it to myself. Um, boop, boop, boop. but yeah, no. So very 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 much, yeah. Glad glad that we uh, can relate to him on the. Uh, <laughs> Well, I was told not I was told not to do this, so uh it's going to take me a very long time to reevaluate whether or not I can do the thing. But yeah, so once once I realized that hey, buses are a chill thing for me to use, awesome. Um and I'm quite happy because uh I I've, I've recently as a perk from my work um gotten uh, some very nice some very nice public transit perks that I really can't take advantage of unfortunately, but like it's cool. Um Robert just doesn't care what others are saying. He's like, oh, where's the newest version of mod? I think I have it outdated. Ah, I think people are more 
I think people want more of a pardon or excuse message than just, oh, yeah. Yep, uh, it's, it, it's one of those things, like, I, 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 I don't, I do not enjoy people having to feel embarrassed or suffering, you know, from, from awkward situations. At the same time, you know, it's that sort of the, the F around and find out is a surprisingly effective tool for learning things, and I, I think that Robert does not have a great grasp on, um, how his words sometimes come across, so I hope that this helps him dial that in a bit more. Um, made a new Baba level called New Parson. Guess what that level is? It was a text variant. Yep. Yup. <laughs> um, but yeah, so driver's license is very expensive, and the buses and trains here are almost always are walking distance from your destination. That's awesome. That that's super solid. Um and your dad said I wasn't allowed to be mad, so now when I get mad, I'm very confused. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Um. Well, I I am I am I am not your dad, so I'm not uh um so I'm not able to override such things. But personal advice as someone who really struggles with like exper allowing myself to experience emotions, you're allowed to be mad. The problem with being mad isn't being mad. It's how you express it, and if you're expressing it pro appropriately and respectfully. Because that's something I've learned, is you know what? Turns out that being angry, I think, is sometimes healthy. Because, you know, it, be, being angry and frustrated are both signs that, like, hey, my needs are not being met, or I'm, I'm experiencing a difference between what I feel I need or what I want and reality. And that means that you're a person. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, it's- I don't think that's bad. It's how- it's how we deal with it, right? So, go ahead and be mad, just express it well. Um, but, uh, so, uh, bu bu bu. I'm not your dad, Johan. Yep. <laughs> Wait, you're not my dad? Then where is he? I don't know. Slammed a little with the door or something and went upstairs and cried. I- yeah, I don't think that's too bad. Like, Maybe door slamming isn't, like, the optimal way to express it, but it's not too terrible. Uh, Aku D&D, I'm playing the hardest version of one! Oh, nice! So, um, so, first level, so, so, 1A, and you're doing it dashless? Damn! I have not tried anything dashless. <laughs> I've, I've apparently tried things mostly grabless, uh, because I'm stubborn about my stamina use sometimes, but not for any sort of challenge, just because I thought that's how you're sol supposed to solve a puzzle. <laughs> um, well, the final blow. Congratulations, stick figure, you're blocked. And right after, an apology would be nice. Yeah, there's still not been an apology. Yep. Oh, hopefully, in fairness, I would, I would rather someone take the time to think things through before they apologize than an immediate and vapid one. Dashless sucks. In fair, I I have not done it, but considering how often I use dashes, um, particularly as a sort of panic button, I can imagine that you know, hobbling yourself in that regard would absolutely be a nightmare. So, <laughs> best of luck with that. Um, I will say um, we've had a number of folks in chat uh, start like playing the level that I'm actively working on, and then like lap me multiple times. So. I believe in you. I suspect that you'll be able to finish that dash list before I get this heart, honestly. <laughs> it's like 30 frame perfect jumps. Damn! That's a... Uh... Wow. <laughs> Me struggling with uh, the Jump King... Uh... Oh, it was the chim... Actually, no, I was kind of fine with the chimney one, which was in theory frame perfect. I struggled more with the... Um, right after the chimney jump. <laughs> So, I don't know. Uh, if, 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 you, if you end up sticking around, you will find that many of the things that other people find difficult are the things I find easy, and the things that people think are comically easy are the ones I really struggle with. So... <laughs> but... The fact that you're even considering trying Dashless, and you're someone who hangs out in Celeste streams, it seems to be a self-selecting bunch, so I, I, I believe in your immense Celeste power. Boop. But yeah, 
so that so uh yeah uh, what quick recap driving good driving is nice oh that there we go i was trying to do the recap because i'm like oh, there's there's one more thing that i wanted to say on that of um i love driving is like one of my favorite activities right now um like i don't just go out and do it recreationally that much but um i i love it because the amount of focus it takes is like perfectly optimal for my brain where i can like turn on some music and i just simply exist and i am delighted by this um like i don't i'm not dealing with like too much anxiety or stress i'm not feeling sad i'm just like vibing to music cargo burr i'm so happy and i've even i've been listening to podcasts um going to and from work which is awesome so uh that's cool um because i i typically can't manage podcasts but like it's it's the perfect it's the perfect commute um length for the podcast i'm listening to and on top of that like um because it's a commute it's something where i'm like i it's I'm pretty locked into it, so I'm not having to pay, like, as much attention. It's great. Um. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, controller keyboard? I am, I am controller. Um, so my first attempt at Celeste was, like, three years ago before I had even considered started stream starting streaming. Um. But, um. Boop, boop, boop. I will look at that wall in a moment, Uno. Um. Control, uh, I, I started, I, I tried it a while back when I first bought it for like 30 minutes with a keyboard and I could not manage. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I waited until I got a controller, which I picked up so I could play near and then started playing Celeste and it's been going a lot better. Love Christmas so much. I enjoy Christmas as well, but I'm still, I'm still sort of in the like harvesty vibes, which is something that I do want to give points. American Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving, fantastic timing of being a barrier against the Christmas tide. Um, so I, I will give props to that holiday from that regard. But hey, welcome in quote. How's it going? I'm sorry. I I <laughs> I have not done further work on the um, retrograde inverse puzzle. Um, the the uh, the Latin one. But I did actually put it into a programming editor, and I, I I have a clue of where to go with it. I have just not had my brain wrapped around it. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's that's fair, Uno, and I. I, I have met a number of folks like that, but yep, it, it's sort of, it is that awareness of self and what you want, but not as much awareness of the folks around, which, again, you hope that people will learn over time from interacting, because folks seem to enjoy interacting with others, so hopefully they will learn through repeated interaction and being motivated by the desire to continue interacting in positive ways. Um, Arch 2 update, mini game in one of the worlds is 90% complete. Awesome! And it's going? Okay, well, you know, going is better than not going, as we often say, so thumbs up, yay. Laptop is absolutely refusing to recognize your controller, sadness. Dash just pretty much requires two dash key binds. Oh? oh wait, wait. So dashless dash list requires extra key binds for the dashing? Um, Thanksgiving sounds so fun and cozy. Like, the concept of it is really nice, um, of just, like, being able to, like, I mean, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, like, similar concept to some Christmas celebrations I've seen, right? Of, it's, like, it's getting together with family and friends and just, like, having a nice meal. That's awesome. Um, did I see anything odd when I opened? I, it, I did! Um, specifically, I saw some odd things about, uh, well, uh, I'll be, I'll be, uh, obtuse about it. Uh, I would say reading between the lines, <clears throat> or between the words. Um, jump mistyped. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Hey, and we will indeed, uh, hydrate. Thank you, hey, a cicada. Oh, we are hydrated. Good for more exercise. Mac and cheese with bacon? I've not heard that associated with Thanksgiving. Is that, is that a thing? Read Between the Lines by Tom Carty? 
I don't know. I feel like I've heard the name Tom Cardi before as a comedian? Question mark. Itching to tell something funny, but I'm afraid it will straight up spoil the solution, or at least allow someone to snatch it from you. No, 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 no worries. As I'm, 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 I'm moving quite slow on it. I will try. I've been, I, I, look, I, I. I took a trip, I took like a little vacation last weekend, which was awesome, but for some reason I have been so woefully tired since then. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It might it might be like vacations are supposed to recharge you, but I feel like sometimes they just make you feel more exhausted by like the realities of daily life. <laughs> I don't know. Damn decided not to celebrate together this year because your sister is busy with her own family and brothers. Ah, uh, yeah. I get that. As 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 folks grow and such, it tends to be a little more fractured um a lot of like holiday stuff um because again i've mentioned probably excessively but um since my 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 current small family unit needs to be like very very uh conscientious about uh covid um we haven't like had a big family gathering that we've been able to go to for quite some time um but like if it works um and uh, what what we've sometimes done is uh, like the day after like a sort of family holiday, um, we'll like try and get together some sort of like video call and just like I, I we don't typically do eat meals at that point, but I've actually I've done that with uh, some of my faraway friends of just like sit down, get on a video call, and we just eat food together, which is really nice. I see. It's I, I will try. I will try. Quote. I just. Uh, I, I have like 28 things that I'm trying to do and then I end up doing none of them and I am sorry to both myself and the other people it affects. Um, I'd like to eat American mac and cheese once but I'm afraid you'll die. Like, when you say American mac and cheese, do you mean like craft dinner mac and cheese? Like, just like very, very like from the box type that you can get just about anywhere? Or are you talking like soul food, like deep south really probably deeply unhealthy for your heart mac and cheese <laughs> um well I'll redeem 50k points i unfortunately uh the way the um the way the community uh challenge thing works uh silver it 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 mandates a cap based on what the largest thing is back in mac and cheese what's back in mac and cheese um, I don't understand people censoring words like die in public chat areas. Like, what will happen if you don't? Will, example, Twitch demonetize you from chatting? Yeah, not from chatting, but I, I think it is something where, like, <clears throat> it, it's the concept of, like, if if a streamer or something um, is, like, self-censoring, it's, like, somewhat polite to do that as well, I guess. But I don't know about other situations. Bedtime for you. Good night, everyone. Good night, Tim. Thank you for dropping in. Thank you for the raid. Hopefully you get some good sleep and... One of these days, I'll actually be able to hop into a stream again. <laughs> Get some good rest. Oh, I've had box mac and cheese, um, but some people I saw on TikTok put 100 kilo cheeses and cream. That, I'm sorry, 100 kilos of... I, I assume that's hyperbole. Um, but, man, yeah, that, no. I, I don't think that's American, but, I mean, I could very well be wrong, but, like, huh. Oh! Baked creamy mac and cheese is amazing. Hey, well, thank you for the chat, hey, a cicada. I was about to say welcome in, but you did the, um, words, you did, you did the redeem, so yay! Welcome! Um, that is making me realize, when, when you said bacon mac and cheese, um, or wait, hold up, brain, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to get everything. I'm I'm losing things here. Um uh, I think that I think that was Aku D D. Someone said someone said yes, bacon okay, there we go. Bacon B-A-C-O-N. The I understand now. There we go. Um <laughs> I understand. Yes, bacon and mac and cheese is awesome. Um I, I exaggerate. Yes, um, E-X-A-G-G-E-R-A-T-E, -E, I believe. Um, <laughs> yes, what a word. Also wouldn't know, thank you, predictive text. Your spelling sucks? No worries, it's totally fine. I just, I, I want, I, I like to understand, and sometimes I, I, I have a, 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 
rough time with it. Hope you guys are good. Just gonna observe. No worries. We appreciate our lurkers. Um, but no, I big agree on on bacon mac and cheese. Um, uh, Aku D and D, and I also I agree with you, Hey Cicada, on uh, on like baking the mac and cheese. Um, absolutely, like that's that's very good because it's 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 like crisping the cheese a little. Um, dear God, someone made AI generate Minecraft as in uh, as we're playing the game, the AI takes your inputs and tries to generate the next. Oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> almost done with three B. Yeah. Also, welcome in Sigma. Um, yeah, we, we've seen the heart. Um, we are currently, uh, off our game, but, uh, <laughs> um, oh, oh, oh. wait, sounds like what? <laughs> um, oh, oh, bah, 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 bah. okay, we've got that. Nope. Okay. So I think we need to overdrive in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, overdriven, overdriven. Um, AI yeah, is great for simulating what a dream is like. I can. So okay. So here's something that um I I do really miss. Um, there's a band called Neutral Milk Hotel that has an album called In the Aeroplane Over the Sea, and it's I love it. It is such a weird little thing. Um. And the, one of the tracks, one of my favorite tracks, is Holland 1945, which r I did a little reading into it because it's one of those songs where you listen to it and you go, there is obviously a cohesive thought here, but I have no earthly idea what it is, and I'm violently curious. Um, so with apologies, because it's a little weird and squicky, but... Apparently, at, at least what I read was that the, like, lyricist for Neutral Milk Hotel read the entirety of the diary of Anne Frank and had a dream, uh, basically, like, fell in love with her. I don't know in what way. It was not specific, it, like, just, like, platonic adoration or maybe more romantic, don't know, but started, like, obsessing over it and had a dream about her being reincarnated as a small Spanish boy um, who was a piano street performer. Um, and apparently that's what the song is about. Um, yeah, she was a child, which I'm like, that's why I said warning a bit squicky. Um, but also she's dead, which also kind of, so it's like, I, and again, like, it was not clear. Artists can be weird, man. Um, but yeah, because, well, it's because, like, you're listening to the song, it's talking about, like, now now she's a little boy in Spain playing pianos filled with flame on empty rings around the sun. I'm like, well, okay, what? Like, it, it feels like a fever dream. Um, but there was this video that was feeding that in, was feeding in the lyrics to, um, a stable diffusion, um, AI, which I'm, from my understanding of how they generate art, I'm a little more okay with it because it's not... It's not feeding in from other people's art, it's basically using, it's still using a model which has been trained on people's art to basically um, discriminate and train the, gener the the actual image generation, but the image generation is not working by defuzzing um, other people's art. Um, but it, it was fascinating because the way, the things that the, 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 um, the AI was generating, it, it was very wonky and dreamlike. Um, and I, I adored that, but because of all of the, um, discussion surrounding the sort of modern, um, wave of, uh, AI art, uh, I'm guessing the original poster pulled it, which is so sad because I, I wish I had saved it. It was, ah, uh, it was so cool. It, it fit the vibes very perfectly. Um, so, yeah. So, sorry, weird, weird, weird little tangent there, but Neutral Milk Hotel, awesome, awesome indie band. If you enjoy just sort of a soundscape with... Certainly some thoughts behind it. <laughs> yeah, Minecraft thing doesn't work well in your opinion because it doesn't have spatial awareness and doesn't have a concept of time memory. It's, I haven't watched it, but like it as an art piece, it sounds vaguely interesting. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, it's I, I, I enjoy some stuff that has like very, very strange uh, concepts behind it. Because I mean, like I'm I'm a huge fan of like uh, Roger Waters uh, pros and cons of hitchhiking. Um, which I was so excited the first time I watched the movie, um, The Wall, uh, there's a fantastic, um, 
scene where uh, the 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 actor playing Pink is in a bathroom stall, and he's he's singing one of the songs off of Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking, which means that Roger Waters was noodling around with it. And oh, it was just uh, ah, <laughs> loved it a lot. Um, English teacher, another good band. English teacher. Okay, I will keep that in mind. I'm intrigued. Hold up, I'm doing my classic search it so that I can go find it later when I'm going, oh, what was that again? English teacher band. There we go. Um, <clears throat> Bochi the Rock has an official Spanish dub? Oh, hell yes. Yeah, that was a super cute show. How to Stop the Book, How to Stop Time by Matt Egg. Okay. How to Stop Time, Matt Egg. There we go. Also popping that up so that I can go and retrieve it. Uh, it's, I'm, man, I wish my memory was better. And I'm also, in fairness, when it comes to, like, streaming, I am having a conversation that is one to, like, ten people, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to give myself a little more grace on that. But I do also know that even, like, just interacting with, uh, like, IRL people, I have a lot of times where I'll just forget things that were said. Um... So I'm trying. I'm trying to build more and more systems so that I can actually remember things. Clarence Clarity. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Um. Queens of Queens of the Stone Age. I am familiar with. I've not listened to too much of their stuff. Um. But like, I I I have heard I I have heard the name of the band before. I know I've listened to some of their stuff. My dad is really into them. Um. <laughs> yes, album of the year, uh, uh, that uh, or your top 100 albums. I do still have uh, your playlist, of, playlist of some uh, your like top 100 songs. It's getting very cold in the Netherlands. Like how cold? Um, spikes don't exist. Hitboxes are an illusion. You beat it. Nice. <laughs> what was I saying about you will probably get through that before I get through this comparatively much simpler uh, phase. <laughs> So nice. Boop. Only no Celsius? Go ahead. Put in Celsius. I I can work with either. I I personally prefer I I do prefer Fahrenheit for like day-to-day -day temperature stuff. Um and so, so it's around freezing point, so around zero. Um, okay. No, like I'm 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 not like as conversant in like day-to-day -day temperature for Celsius because I don't use it as much because I prefer Fahrenheit and tend to just like ment mentally recalculate um, just because I, I like the higher degree of de granularity but at the same time in fairness you know <laughs> in Fahrenheit the difference between a 60 and 65 degree day isn't necessarily that huge so like it's probably fine for that to be covered by like two to three degrees right um of course you know Celsius favorite nerd it's it's reasonable like <laughs> It's reasonable to know both systems. If you if you are on the metric system, it's less reasonable to then also you know go and learn imperial because it is in a lot of ways worse for just like managing things. But there are a couple of nice things about it, and you know either either way, I I, I think there are some things that both do better. <laughs> Huge hoodie that's soft and warm as a blanket. Nice. Yeah, I I enjoy I. Personally, I'm actually kind of a fan of, like, sub-freezing temperatures. Not from, like, a home maintenance standpoint, but... Fahrenheit is very confusing for you? It's... Fahrenheit is very confusing on, like, how it's indexed. I don't even actually remember... What... What is... What is the point of, uh... Fahrenheit, how it's calibrated? Um... Fahrenheit... Um... Calibration. I also... See... Now, this is a very goofy reason. Part of why I like Fahrenheit is because it helps me always remember the temperature at which paper burns. Um, <laughs> terms of temp imperial is for humans metric. That, that's kind of how I view it of like, that's, I, I, like, I like Fahrenheit for day-to-day -day use. At the same time, I, that might just be weird, right? <laughs> like, you know, because realistically, you know, one degree Celsius is approximately two degrees Fahrenheit. That is very loosely rounded. Um, but I, because I think it's technically like 1.8 Fahrenheit degrees for every Celsius degree, but like it, you know, it, it works out Four fifty one exactly for Fahrenheit. As like, I don't, I don't have that locked in my head in Celsius, right? <laughs> Fahrenheit. Ayo. Um, no, that would be feet. Um, 
but you're you're constantly sick when it's cold that's yeah that would make it less enjoyable i i don't know i for me just cold weather is nice because otherwise i'm constantly sweating <laughs> So, is a temperature scale based on one proposed in 1724 by the European physicist Daniel, Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. It uses... Also, I'm sorry. I love that it's just generic. The European physicist. I, <laughs> um, born in Poland to a family of German extraction. Okay. Well, okay. So, I, I can understand why maybe they're like, so which would we say? But... Ever wondered when paper will burn? Oh. Well, you should. Yeah, European, very generically. But it's so it sounds like po Polish by nation, German by heritage. Um, so several accounts of how you originally defined the scale exist, but the original paper suggests the lower defining point, zero uh, Fahrenheit, was established by the freezing temperature of a, so a solution of brine made from a mixture of water, ice, and ammonium chloride, a salt. A salt. So, so it... It's in it's potentially indexed to the freezing point of salt water. I've never I've never tried I've never tried salt water at zero Fahrenheit. I kinda wanna try that now. Um the other limit, uh so, and I mean that's also that's super imprecise unless we know exactly like how much salt, because that would change it more, I believe. Um, the other limit established was his best estimate of the average human body temperature, originally set at 90 Fahrenheit, then 96. <laughs> so, okay, so it, it was some was somewhat quite literally made about humans, but wow. Um, look at how terrible it sounds. Well, it, yeah, the, the, the like, endpoints of the scale are not fantastic. Um, which is why, like, yes, I remember that 212 is the boiling point of water at, like, standard temperature and pressure, but, like, did I say standard temperature at st standard atmospheric pressure? <laughs> um, oh God, STP being pulled out of my head from my chemistry class. Um, but yeah, um, it. So I don't know. Like I remember that, but yeah, when it comes to like cooking and such, I typically deal with it in Celsius. It's just like, yeah, I, I like when it comes to like measuring a fever i'd rather know it in fahrenheit than celsius but when it comes to and like you know my day to day stuff day to day i may actually try and move over to celsius like the more the more i talk about it the less defensible it feels to do daily stuff in fahrenheit so maybe i should reindex that for myself um but yeah interesting um wonder if zero fahrenheit salt water would actually hurt you due to how cold it is i mean possibly i mean it i don't know if I don't know if zero degree Fahrenheit is like painful. <laughs> um, I I'm I'm weird when it comes to temperature because I I've been out in um sub water freezing temperatures so like it was what so it was like 17 Fahrenheit so in terms of Celsius that's oh oh brain wait <laughs> hold up it's been a <laughs> funnily enough it's been a while since I've done that without a calculator. So that's, I can also just look up something. I, t I typically just do that there, but it's um, sub water freezing is negative Celsius. Right. But I'm, I'm trying to remember how we actually convert at that point, because so from Celsius to Fahrenheit is times 1.8 plus 32. So it would be minus 32 and then divide by 1.8, I think. So that would be. So, so if it was 17 Fahrenheit, that would be 15, so negative 15, and then divided by 1.8. So probably like negative 7, negative 6, somewhere in there. Um, let me see if that's actually correct. So Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, duh. <laughs> Email notification noise. Um, so 17 Fahrenheit is negative 8 Celsius. Woohoo! So yes, we were in the ballpark. Um, but yeah, so um, I've I've been out in that weather in a uh, t-shirt and a kilt, um, and I was fine. <laughs> um, so thirty-seven is around normal time, and forty or above is fever. Yeah, but like you know, it's still like th there can be some pretty si di significant differences based on the like. Uh, a one or two degree difference in Fahrenheit, um, so it's a little less granular with Celsius, but, like, not too terrible, I guess? 
Um, because, like, you know, it's still just, like, half a degree, essentially. And Johan is cold immune. It's... I, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, as an ink spirit, it doesn't affect me much, you know. It's, I don't know, I, I enjoy cold temps. Um, thought ink would freeze at sub-zero temperatures. Well, I'm, uh, ink it do is water with the addition of, uh, some interesting, like, chloride, uh, some, some interesting salts. Um... It's like, again, I think I've talked about, um, I, I imagine that Johan, I, I believe that I'm, uh, like, Iron Gall ink, so I've got, um, Iron Sulfate mixed in, which would probably, uh, lower the freezing temp. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Cycling without gloves? Yeah. No, that's, I, I, see, I, I'm not, Meat Han is not entirely cold immune, because, uh, Meat Han did actually have, like, terrible eczema, um, in cold, dry, um, in, in like cold dry air um but i the thing is like i i i i moisturized well and got past that moisturized thriving in my own lane and uh yeah um now i'm fine in it <laughs> um but yeah so I don't know. It's, I I enjoy cold. I enjoy uh, cold temps. I moisturize well, Johan. I did quite literally. I, I I had special I had special brands that were meant to like help with my skin literally like breaking. Uh, <laughs> if if any of you have not dealt with eczema, be happy. Eczema sucks. Um. As in fairness, I never had to deal with acne. So, you know, it, that it's one of those like trade-off things because I, I think I think it's generally like on one end of the spectrum, if you if your skin tends to produce like more oils, you tend to like have to deal with acne, which I have he heard is miserable. Um, whereas eczema is more if you tend to be on the like dry flaky side of things. You get both? No! That's terrible. <laughs> you should only be afflicted with one annoying skin condition. Two is far too much for one person. Not a lot of eczema? Okay. But still, just any amount feels deeply unfair. If if you already have to deal with acne, you should not... By mandate, you should not be required to deal uh, with eczema. Um... That said, it was mostly dealt with when I was quite young, so... I, I, I never actually, like, learned a lot about, like, skincare routine, which is kind of sad. Um, I have been considering, um, trying to do something for it, though, because I've got, um, ooh, identifying meat hunt information. Um, I have a skin condition called Dermatosis Polaris, which is, sounds more menacing than it is. Uh, what it basically means is all of my hair follicles have, like, tiny little, uh, extra bumps because, like, keratin and other stuff builds up on them. It's fine, like, it's not bad, it doesn't actually cause me any harm, it just makes my skin look very bumpy. Kinda like, um, if any of you have seen, like, a, uh, uh, some sort of bird after, uh, feathers have been plucked, um, like, preparing it, that kinda like goose skin. Um, yep, bro bumpy, exactly. Um, so, yeah, like, I've, I got little bumps and there's part of me that's like, ah! There, there are, there are, there are certain things that you can buy to, like, deal with it. Um, gotta go, hey! Thank you for hanging out, though. Good, good job on the dashless. It was good to get to hang out and do, I guess, some parallel play. Um, fare thee well. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Go do great things. Um, or sleep. That's also a great thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but yeah, so I've, I've been, I've been looking at, uh, debumpifying myself, but... I don't know. It's, uh, I've not felt a strong urge. Uh, there was like I went to see a dermatologist when I was a lot younger, and at that point they offered some of the stuff, and I was like, I don't know. The bumps are part of what makes me me, so no, I wanna I wanna keep them, which is a very noble concept. But also, the bumps aren't what make me me, so meh. <laughs> I had to get that my OCD would have a great time scratching all the bumps I fear. I will say that was probably one of the, like, uh, most problematic things, because, I, to be very clear, I, I do not think I have OCD. I do think, so it turns out, OCD, like most other things, is a spectrum, and there is a lot of, like, subclinical obsessive-compulsive tendencies. 
the way that I count in multiples of two, four, and eight, eight being the best number and having to do that and having out more patterns with my right than my left in those ratios and the way I pick it myself sometimes, I would be unsurprised if I were to go take one of the tests for an OCD diagnosis, if I rated highly on subclinical, uh, <laughs> basically I, I was highly rated on a, a subclinical level for some of those things. Um, but yeah, uh, Nobo never gets sick except when I do. Hmm. It's not hurting, it's all right, Bumpy is cool. Yeah, like, and that's that's fine. Like, yes, it did encourage me to pick at myself to the point where it did hurt sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> How does OCD tests even work? Um, I have not, so that is one that I'm less familiar with personally. Um, so I will act, let's, let's take a moment. Let's talk about that because it's interesting. Told my nurse sister I have OCD and she said, no, you can't have that because you never, oh my, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, we love misconceptions about psychological things. Woo. No, yeah, no. Um, I will, the, the, the only person I have met in real life who has clinically diagnosed OCD, um, for them, it was a hand-washing thing because it, it was like a cleanliness bit, but, um, I, I believe, I believe, oh, what, okay, so first off, because a lot of these will have a couple of different competing tests, although depression has, like, one, and it's one that I have a lot of personal grievances with, um, but, so, OCD, um, it, they typically use what's called a Likert scale. Um, or Likert, you may also heard it pronounced as, L-I-K-E-R-T, um, which is basically the, like, here's a statement, how much do you agree with it on a scale of, like, 1 to 5, or 1 to 7, with 7 being strongly agree, 1 being uh, strongly disagree. Um, but, um, and then basically, if you tick enough of those boxes, there's a certain threshold at which things get diagnosed, is my understanding of how it works, um, at least in the U.S., which is where I have learned the most about it, or at least where I will tell you I have learned the most about it. Um, <laughs> uh, do, do, do. um, but I believe those tend to be relatively, um, international because they're trying to make things, uh, work well across countries, but there's also a lot of issues with using, um, Likert scale tests, um, internationally, um, because turns out, turns out, <laughs> Um, turns out that, uh, different cultures, different countries and such, uh, have some very different, um, ways that they relate to things and whatnot and different ways that things can manifest. Um, so if you have a test, I mean, the, even just like on language, uh, there's some really interesting stuff where, um, because the U S has, um, a fairly big, uh, Hispanic population that's, uh, primarily, um, Spanish speaking or, uh, bilingual, there have been some really awesome studies um, in that bilingual population where um, mostly I've seen that in like uh, personality psych, but um, there's this concept of the big five personality test, which I've prattled about in the past. Um, but people score differently um, on the on these personality tests based on their language. And yes, a lot of personality tests you will score differently just on different times of the day. But the big five personality test. Um, oh, what's it called? There's a particular one that gets used that's like a 200 item inventory that actually creates fairly stable answers. Um, and that that one, it basically, um, even though uh, they tend to be stable within their so their answers within a particular language of it are stable. They are different answers from one language to another, which is really interesting. Um the ADHD test, which I'm 97% sure I have, is a test where they sit you in a chair and they tell you to stay put. That would uh, not to my knowledge, <laughs> um, because again, uh, Likert scale um, is how they typically typically do that. Same thing with autism as well, depression, anxiety, um, because those are those are ways to actually try and quantify these things, which I can also talk. Uh, OK, we've unlocked psychology rant. Uh, <laughs> so, it's great with Celeste, though. Um, so with me, it wasn't a particular test. Okay, yeah. Um, I probably have the TISM, but psychologist told me she doesn't have uh, much knowledge on it yet and hasn't put me on the waiting list for the test, which is six months. Blah. Yeah, I... I um, so I saw a therapist a while back. I uh, did a little bit. Um, specifically, I was going uh, to them mostly for depression and anxiety. Um, I, don't, I don't believe I technically tested high enough for an anxiety disorder, but that was also 
I I was kind of I think answering a little less on some of the questions because that was like uh, it was a particularly rough time in my life. I'm like that's not stable. Um, depression though, I was like yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, and like ADHD and autism are both things where I would be unsurprised. I do not know if I would meet again the clinical definition, but there are some things where I go, yeah, there there is likely some element there because one of the things here here is my thesis here is the simplest thing if there's nothing else you take away from watching me yap about this today please take away that anything anything that is considered i'm going to use the term psychological disorder here there's a number of different different bits of language about it like psychopathology and so on i'm talking about i'm using the term psychological disorder to try and be very broad with it and something that a lot of folks uh are familiar with um that is not in any way disparaging it is brains work different ways but things that we consider to be on the extremes of what we consider normal on the bell curve every form of psychological disorder has some huge range and isn't something that's a tick mark you do have it or you don't have it um what is rejection sensitive dysphoria? Reje rejection sensitive dysphoria is one cluster of symptoms that is typically associated with ADHD. Um, it is, those are um, symptoms that are typically associated with basically extreme negative reactions to um, basically a perception of social rejection, um, which is something that I relate to a bit, but again, I haven't done any testing. Take it all with a grain of salt. And to be clear, while these are things that I do know a relative a bit amount about, um, <laughs> I've got a degree in psychology, a bachelor's degree. Um, I am not an expert in any of these things. This is me talking off the cuff. Please do all your own research, all of that stuff. This is me yapping a little bit. Um, but yeah, big takeaway is all of it is a spectrum, all of it is a scale. The way that we say whether or not someone has a thing is we have them take a test, usually on a Likert scale, and if they score high enough on enough of those questions, we say they have the thing. Those standards have been set, I believe, typically in the DSM-5, um, is at least what the APA, which is the American Psychological Association, uses. Um, I believe that is one that, again, gets used in a number of countries. Um, and it basically says, here is, if they score at this, at, if they score this many, and it can be on different aspects of that DSM-5-2. Yep. And that's, I, I believe that it is sort of, it's, I always want to be specific. I don't know where all it gets used. I'm not going to say where I am and if it gets used there or not. Um, but, uh, well, I guess I... Yes, the place that I am does use uh, APA standards and uh, the DSM-5, but I, I do not know about all places. I'm going to specifically say related to the U.S. because most of these are standards developed in the U.S., um, or at least that are maintained somewhat by. Um, but, uh, ba -ba 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 -da -ba. um, so, okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> be going all off, but basically... Pretty much anything, uh, any sort of personality disorder that you've heard about, anything like ADHD, autism, OCD, depression, anxiety, all of these are things where we have language surrounding them because they are experiences that people have, but there is a very wide range of experiences that people have. Psychology has attempted to impose order on it, um, <laughs> but it turns out brains are super complicated, and one of the biggest issues is that... <laughs> You have to come up with a way to say whether or not someone has the thing or doesn't have the thing for the purpose of does insurance cover this? Do we give them medication or not? And it's kind of really messy as a result. Um, and I know that's something that's particularly big in the U.S. because there's a lot of privatized healthcare, um, where literally a lot of these diagnoses have these thresholds and need to maintain these particular diagnostic thresholds so that they can figure out whether or not insurance will cover giving them medication for it. Um, but basically all all of these things if you have it it typically what that what separates you as someone who quote unquote has the thing from someone who doesn't have the thing despite scoring highly but below the threshold is literally whether or not you had more numbers or not 
Um, I, I think a lot of them are typically like 10 questions and then like one through seven. So a score of between seven and 70. So let's say that the threshold is 40 on one of them. I'm pulling this out of my butt. If someone scores 39 on an ADHD test, they don't have ADHD. If they score a 40, they do. Um, <laughs> which is, uh, quite, uh, quite goofy. Uh, most of our medicine gets covered except for the pill. Thanks, conservatives. Whee! Um, but even then, it's still something where even, even if the stuff will get covered, I assume that there's still something that's happening behind the scenes that needs to make the determination that this is someone where that's going to be helpful and that the, you know, naturally provided insurance will cover that. Um, so a lot of these things, it's, it's literally whether or not you score highly enough on that which can come up with a lot of problems. Also, there's a lot of problems in that a lot of these uh, neuro spicy experiences um, are, there's a lot of overlap in some of the symptomology. So you'll note that like, there's a lot of studies, there's a lot of like high comorbidity between uh, these things. So like if you tend to have ADHD, there's a much higher likelihood that you also have autism, so on and so forth. I believe again, that is, me vaguely remembering things. I know that there's higher comorbidity. I don't remember about those two specifically, but I believe that is the case. Um, and what makes one part of that, what makes one thing part of ADHD and what makes the other part of autism, a lot of times just boils down to when we were trying to initially come up with these standards, when people were complaining about these things, they got lumped in with this group. And when people were complaining about these things, they got lumped in with that group. It's really rough it's there's not like a oh this this is what this is you have it or you don't it's doing our best to try and impose order on a wide rate a wide range of things um so when it comes to so uh the ocd test it looks like yale brown obsessive compulsive scale um is what i've turned up with just looked up a paper they're talking about the efficacy of transnasal oxytocin in patients with prater willi syndrome a systematic review and uh meta-analysis and that they're talking about how they're using the Yale Brown obsessive compulsive scale. The reason why these exist is because, again, we're trying to understand a wide constellation of things. Um, Brown obsessive compulsive scale. There we go. So if what so Nobo, you were talking about like, oh, I as I understand it, the ADH test is they basically see whether or not you can sit still in a chair. That would be terrible scientifically um, for a number of reasons. One of the reasons, not the least of which, is turns out people who are diagnosed as having ADHD can sit still in a chair. <laughs> Some of them can. Even ones that have issues with fidgeting can sit still in a chair. Um, there's, again, there's a broad constellation of symptoms that get associated with it. Whether or not you can sit still in a chair doesn't have anything to do with rejective sensitive dysphoria. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not, you know, how how easy of a time you have in uh, focusing on things and memorizing things. Um, uh, it's, I'm, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm blanking on the symptomology of ADHD right now. Um, but uh, they track your brain activity during it. Okay, but what aspect of your brain activity? These are things that are probably useful. We might be able to glean information, but brain waves are something um, basically, as I understand it, you can detect basically brain wave patterns for things like sleep studies with, I believe, an EEG. Um, but those are very rough. If you're trying to actually map particular aspects of brain activity, I believe most of those are, I think that's usually like MRI, which doesn't really do uh, live imaging that well. Um, I could be wrong. It's, that was a lot of my biopsych classes, which has been a while. But there's a lot of a lot of actual like neural imaging studies are really tough because they can only give you specific snapshots. Um, they don't really it's not. We don't really have like, oh, we can see what parts of your brain are firing at X, Y, and Z times. Um, like, well, actually, no, because there, I have seen some studies that are looking at that. So there must be ways, but it must be a bit less precise. It's been a while. Um, so disregard that. <laughs> um, but even so, there's not like a particular, um, they do have some of that, but less precise. Okay. Um, because yeah, I, I, there's a number of techniques that was not the side that I was getting into as much. Um, they have games you can control <laughs> your mind uh, in real time. Well, it's, I know, um, I remember seeing ads for like, there was a headband where it literally was just basically seeing if you had large electrical spikes or whatnot. So if you thought really hard, it, it basically was a binary thing and you could set different thresholds. I know like Neuralink, um, that, uh, 
Elon Musk is working on. Um, that one of his companies, uh, Neuralink is a chip that is basically what it's doing is it's having people essentially calibrate it. So they think about moving their right arm and that's setting the input for clicking the mouse or whatever. Um, but by and large, so I, a, that test would not capture all of the symptomology B what would be your actual quantifiable metric for it? So you would need to set a specific amount of time. Okay, so over the course of five minutes, let's say, over five minutes, we've got this person in a chair. Over the course of those five minutes, we need to also measure, okay, we need to quantify what staying in a chair is. So we could say that's number of times that they stand up. But there's so many things that can affect that, right? Um, that's not super great. Um, also, what counts as standing up? Okay, is it, does it need, you know, if one butt cheek is still on the chair, is that fine? Um, you know, fidgeting is another thing. Like, you could do that, but there's different types of fidgets. What's a fidget versus, like, oh, a bug flew up their nose, they're dealing with that. Um, that's just, that's that's a very imprecise scale. Whereas what we typically do, and we often, things like that can get used supplementally. Um but um, when it comes to uh, but what we do to try and actually make things be com uh, comparable is we use things like Likert scales, uh, basically self-report. Um, so boop, boop, boop. PCL psychiatry, UW, UW. Um, OK. <laughs> I like that, that the end isn't underlined and bolded. Um, funny thing is you're not paying attention. Sorry, no worries. Um, but I think they're far from determining a person's personality by looking at brain activity. Oh, 100%. I think they can see your basic emotional state. Even that is tough because uh, I, I believe because I, when I was looking at this a, you know, a couple of years back, um, there's not, we don't really have like a source of emotion or anything. Um, you would need to measure, you would need to measure a bunch of different people when they're feeling a particular emotional state to calibrate that. And if there's a significant amount of variation in that, what's typically going to be best and what you see in a lot of these things is you need to get the individual to calibrate themselves at different states and then you can do comparisons. Um, but yeah, so they'll typically do a uh, Likert scale. So in this case, it's zero through four for um, the Yale Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale. Um, calibrate it to each person? Okay, yeah. And because that's, that's how polygraph tests um, are at least supposed to work, but oftentimes they uh we'll skip on that and also they're they tend to be kind of imprecise anyway but that's <laughs> polygraph tests suck as a form of lie detection um <laughs> different thing um but yeah so you'll typically you'll get something like this so they'll have you go okay time occupied by obsessive thoughts how much of your time is occupied by obsessive thoughts zero none one, less than one hour per day or occasional occurrence, one to three hours per day or frequent, greater than three and up to eight hours per day or very frequent occurrence, greater than eight hours per day or nearly constant occurrence. And so you'll circle one of those numbers and you'll do that for each of the other five questions and then you'll get a score. In this case, it will be from zero up through 16. I assume, based on how that's uh, worded, uh, 16 would be, yes, you have a lot of obsessive thoughts and it's something that's impacting your life a fair bit um whereas zero is why are we even giving you this test but um crash um and so they'll do that um and you know some of these things can change um in a number of different oh there's five questions so uh zero through 20 um but you know uh, likert scales are great because they give you an actual number um and they can get at things that only the person themselves is aware of and can know but the trouble is you also have to rely purely on the person and knowing themselves. And a lot of these can be really imprecise um, because like, OK, if I'm being asked, you know, how much distress do your obsessive thoughts cause you? None. Not too disturbing. Disturbing, but still manageable. Very disturbing. Near constant and disabling distress. People can interpret those in different ways. People have different thresholds for things. Because <laughs> um, like, you know, I've I've been asked, you know. Like, okay, like, what, what's the worst you can imagine? Or, or like, uh, I've heard that for, like, pain scales before, right? Of, like, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much does it hurt right now? I can imagine significantly worse pain than I'm feeling. So even if I am feeling significantly distressed by, like, I don't know, my tummy hurts, you know, maybe most normal people would probably consider that, like, maybe 
a three or a four. I'm probably going to call it a one because I'm like, well, I didn't get my arm lopped off. I'm not having people like do horrible things to my nervous endings. I'm not being burned alive. It's a one. <laughs> That's being a little tongue in cheek, but like legitimately people can calibrate these things differently. So while in theory within individuals, these will be a relatively good measure of things as a diagnostic across a lot of people, if you have a large sample size, which is why these tend to get used, is they get used in a whole bunch of different papers and experiments, which increases the reliability. They get fine-tuned a little bit, but ultimately, they could still be quite flawed. <laughs> um, it's, bas it's basically something where it's, someone came up with this, someone tested it with a bunch of people, they found that was reliable or valid enough, um, and then other places start using them, so they became they become the standard, which gives them more information to work from, which makes them the standard even more embedded, even if maybe they aren't the best tool. Um, but it gives you a number that you can use to actually compare, like, degree of uh, distress or whatnot, and then you can go, well, so this person scored a 12, and, you know, their life is measurably affected. Let's try the medication with them. Oh, hey, it seems to work. Um, so maybe 12 is the threshold because, you know, we've got a bunch of 11s that aren't, but again, there, there can be so much variety within that. And that's, so I'm, I'm, I'm being a little scattered with it, but my, my point is you can have something that's significantly impacting your life, but depending on how you answer this, you might get sorted into a different bucket on it. And so mad respect to therapists, mad respect to psychologists. It's a really tough thing to try and categorize human experience. But there's a lot of issues with how we do it. And the fact that we sort people into buckets of it, of you have it or you don't, I think is really tough. Um, they're quite hesitant to give out medicine. That's, I think, a good thing, generally speaking, because there's a lot of times where places can't over-medicate. Um, but at the same time, there are people that really need the medication and sometimes aren't able to get it. But even if it's not medication, sometimes certain therapies are only available if you actually receive the diagnosis or whatnot, which can be really rough uh, i think i want to want to have an adhd test done on you but like i don't know what to say to your family so something i would say with that um i can double check it and i can send it in dms later but a lot of these tests like this is the scale this is the yale brown obsessive compulsive scale if you wanted to test yourself on this you could look at that to be clear do not use that as a substitute for an actual diagnosis, because while I am pointing out that the difference here, that th this is usually one of the biggest pieces of evidence, actually meeting with a therapist and people who are you know, registered and trained in this that can help interpret and such and can talk to you about other things, yes, it should be a more holistic diagnosis. And you don't, cannot be sure that you will do things exactly right. Sometimes, in certain circumstances, you might be able to talk to the person to help interpret um, what you're being asked a little bit more. Do not use any of these tests as a substitute for an actual diagnosis. But if you are curious and you are trying to think about, is this something that I do want to pursue in an official capacity? I do think... It is something where it would be fine. It doesn't do any harm, I think. Could be wrong. But I, because maybe you do take it as, oh, this means that I do have it or whatnot. But if you truly view it as a, this is a rough screening thing, this is investigatory for myself, go find the scale and take it yourself. And I can help you find that if you're interested. Um, but that is, again, do not self-diagnose. <laughs> I am not, I am not a trained therapist. I have some of the basic education required to potentially pursue further education to become one um, and take an interest in this. I'm not a trained therapist. I doubt that. Well, it sounds like uh, it sounds like um, Alyssa might be, um, but I doubt that anyone in chat is a uh, trained therapist. So, you know, don't self-diagnose, take anything with a grain of salt. But this is a tool that if you're interested in, take it as a purely investigatory thing may help you look at um, a little bit more. It just people are complicated. They aren't like Lego bricks where you're shape A or shape B. No, exactly. Um, no, that, and that's that's precisely it. There's um, a lot of talk for the DSM-6 rather than having classifications of basically classifying things into buckets because like there's this concept of clusters when it comes to um, like, uh, well, you, you've got, you. it's I think like cluster A, cluster B, cluster C. And uh, when it comes to 
oh man it we i we never actually learned that classification because my professor was very adamantly against it because of all of these things here but it's like the, i i think i think it's clusters of like personality disorders um uh like uh oh what's the word uh, it's like more more sort of like psychoses things where there's an actual departure from what we consider to be objective heavy air quotes the shared reality um and i forget what the last one are um but like there, there's this concept of instead of doing clusters and sorting people of you have this or you don't have this trying to move more towards hey this person scored a 20 or or you know this person scored an eight on the obsessive scale and they're talking about how it is affecting their life so we can use that we don't say oh that means they've got you know they've got a, they've got obsessive tendencies it means hey they they score an eight on obsessive tendencies so let's work with that it's currently something that's having an impact on their life let's see what we can do to try and help influence that knowing where they're at on a level uh there so basically trying to break down rather than trying to come up with this is the bucket that we put these symptoms into here are the symptoms that this person has which is great, but insurance companies aren't going to like it. <laughs> so many people around you self-diagnose and it's hurtful with people struggling with it. Yeah, and that's that's why, like, a lot of times when I, I've, I've had people say, like, oh, I think you have ADHD or autism. It's like, look, I would be unsurprised if I at least scored highly on a number of those metrics. I am not going to say that I am autistic or I have ADHD. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say that I experience these things. I can relate to a lot of my friends who have been diagnosed. <laughs> I would be unsurprised if I did receive a diagnosis if it was something where I chose to pursue that. But I, I'm not going to say that I necessarily have a you know say in this and whatnot. And that's something I see a lot online. Is oh, there's a lot of people that heavily relate to these things, and I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that those people don't relate to them. I'm not saying that they're faking it, but we do currently have a system in place that has certain thresholds for being sorted into that. Self-diagnosis outside of that, yeah, can be, eh, um, because it, it's something where, you know, it, there's a difference between relating to something and saying, oh, because I relate to it, I'm, I'm, I'm part of that thing. Um, because like, you know, I've, I've had people around me in the past say like, oh, I, I'm so OCD. I'm like, I've met people who are actually suffering from like clinical levels of it. No, <laughs> like, um, uh, I mean, tell me if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong for this, Ollie, but like, I'll still laugh a little bit at a, a shirt then so, so, that says, I don't have OCD. I have CDO. Like, I'm going to find that joke funny, even if, <laughs> even if. Um, even if that's not a good representation of what it is, it's a funny joke, but it's also at the expense of, and I think tends to perpetuate some of the false concepts around it. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I'll laugh at it, but I will also say, Hey, by the way, yo, ate that your sister does that. I could cry. Yeah. And it's like, that's be being careful to separate out what's real. Like, I wish your OCD was just that I'd like Oh yeah, no, exactly. Like I, I enjoy having stuff be nice and organized on my desk. That doesn't mean uh, it's not something that occupies huge amounts of my time. I have had some things that have probably like my nail biting and some of my body picking is stuff where it has actually gotten like in the way of me living my life. Not super long. I would not say that it rises to like a significant level of distress, but it is something where I. There are certainly some aspects where I go there that might be an avenue that's worth pursuing if that continues and is being an even bigger impact on my life. Um, skin picking you've had that since you were very young. Yep. Nail biting for me. I've however broken myself of that, actually, like it still sometimes happens. But using nail polish has helped a lot. Any boundary on a continuous spectrum, you're going to have two people on opposite sides about. Yep. No, exactly. And that's and that's the. I think one of my favorite things I heard, oh, we'll get back to a little more so last year in a moment, but one, one of my favorite things I heard for talking about how to sort of view some of these things is, oh, 
people experience a very wide range of psychological experiences, right? But it is something that basically look for things where there's distress, right? We want to be able to figure out if someone is distressed, what aspects of it are distressing them so that we can deal with it. Because there's, there's this concept, a lot of these people who say, oh, like, I'm so OCD, what you could probably more reasonably tell them is that they're closer to OCPD, uh, Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, which is a very separate, different, uh, separate thing, um, where OCD is you are dealing with your obsessive compulsive thoughts and it causes you to do things that can be harmful to yourself. So I've had this OCD thing where I have to pick my nose constantly, even if the scabs on your nose would hurt always and it bleeds. Yep. I have I will not get into some of the graphic stories I've read. There are some very, very painful things the uh with that. Um uh, like even hand washing. I've heard people like joke about, oh, it's just washing your hands a bunch. If you wash your hands for six hours, think about what that does to the skin. And that's as detailed as I'm gonna get on that. Um so, you know, that's something where the person is suffering from distress from that psychological experience. That is something that, you know, that that is something that is disordered thought. That is something that we want to try and be able to help and deal with. Um, whereas a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I, I like to organize things and how oh, ha ha ha. There's this concept of OCPD, which, again, I'm not super familiar with, but uh, we were talking about this a little bit when we had a unit on OCD. And its point, the sort of distinction there is people with OCPD are people who maybe do have some of these obsessive compulsive tendencies, but they aren't distressed by them because they're externalized. They aren't these internalized things. It's this sort of externalized, oh, I want my space to be very neat, and they devolve it onto other people. They aren't turning it in on themselves. They're not causing themselves damage. They're not causing a whole lot of damage to others around them. Or if they are, they aren't super aware of it and or don't care. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there, there's a lot of these ways that we can sort of parse some of these experiences. But yeah, it, it's by and large, if someone is suffering from something to a degree where there's distress, we want to be able to try and understand what is the source of that so that we can address it. Wish it was more understood and not joked about all the time. I think that's very fair. Um, yeah, because that's, people tend to have very, very limited views. I know OCD in particular is one that has some very restricted popular concepts about it. Um, and I, I think another, another category that still tends to be very, very maligned, um, are things like, uh, things that fall under like psychoses and, uh, like psychopathy and sociopathy, which are also difficult because I still have not been able to get a solid answer on if there's an actual like clinical distinction between sociopathy and psychopathy. Because there's that's a whole other thing of turns out there's a lot of things that are uh, we are aware of as like psychological issues in a um, like pop culture context that are still in use that exist purely because there wasn't consistent language back when this was being developed. Um, but yeah, no, there there are a lot of things because th I I say this as someone who has been clinically diagnosed with depression, and as someone who was not clinically diagnosed with anxiety, but I also wasn't pushing for that. Um, so in this room, we had a we had a big tangent, um, Alyssa. Uh, I think you would have enjoyed it. We were we were talking about um, uh, Likert scales and uh, psychological diagnoses. <laughs> Um, but I, I, th I think in a lot of ways, um, both depression and anxiety tend to be things that are a little more commonly experienced. You know nothing about that all? Okay. That's, I, I remember you were saying that you had done some counseling work, so wasn't sure uh, to what degree. To what degree you would be... Oh no! Our timing was just off. Um, to what degree uh, you would be familiar with that. Um, but it, it is something where I, I think that there is a lot of like depression, anxiety, even like ADHD and autism are things that are, do not get me wrong, they are still things that people will absolutely not be great about. Um, there are plenty of jokes that I think are in poor taste, and there's still people who have some very, um, I don't know the exact word to encapsulate all of the stuff, but definitely, definitely some, uh, perspectives on those things that are not fantastic and be, can be harmful. There we go. Hey, welcome back, Ocu Dandy. Uh, 
We, we have not made much progress on the room. In fairness, they unlocked me ranting on some stuff, so... <laughs> well, at the moment, I'm mostly working with, like, children that are being disobedient towards their parents. Oh, is it more, um... Is it along the lines of, like, a registered behavior technician? So, uh, doing, like, some, uh, gentle behavior modification? And kids are easily manipulated, yes. Um, soft and malleable minds. Yeah, exactly! Oh, awesome! I've got, I've, uh, got- Oh no! <laughs> I missed the last doorbell again. Um, I've, I've got, I've got, uh, I know some folks in real life. Uh, uh I know some folks that, uh, uh, bleh. Words, language. Know some IRL friends uh, who are who are doing that, and it's awesome. Have more patience than I. Oh, that's I I I enjoy playing these games um, because it's it's sort of it's a meditative exercise that helps me work on some of my personal issues of like, you know, be, being being willing to try things over and over again. I give myself over. Gonna hug the dad? Yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah. So just, just I guess my my closing thoughts on. A lot of the ways that the field of psychology currently does diagnoses is has some problems. There are a lot of people that are working to try and address those, but they don't jive well with a lot of um, that don't jive well with how a lot of financial systems are set up. Um, and it's something where there are some things that we're gaining a better collective understanding about um, and being better about, I think. Um, but there are also some things that still tend to get socially ostracized that people don't understand super well. Case in point, OCD. Um, cognitive behavior therapist? Uh, that's a slightly different one. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, someone who is providing cognitive behavioral therapy is someone who has gone and typically gotten a um, like graduate school degree, either a master's or a doctorate in counseling, um, and is trained to deliver a very particular form of therapy. A registered behavior technician um, you can typically actually do out of high school um, but uh, there, there are some places that have higher higher more stringent standards but um, as I understand it if, if, if I'm understand if, if we're using the same language Alyssa um, it, it's typically dealing with so a cognitive behavioral therapist can be dealing with things like depression anxiety and such um, and they, they are that's that's more the like it's not it's not psychotherapy it's it's not it's not freudian psychotherapy um it's not the like what you see of like the therapist sitting down or you're lying on the couch and the therapist is saying so how does that make you feel what's your childhood like um but it's they're still taking notes and whatnot they're having conversations with you and they're providing you these particular tools that are meant to basically disrupt cognitive dissonance that's what it comes from um, cognitive behavioral therapy, it's working on this theory of you have a cognition that results in a behavior. So let's, if your cognition is distorted, let's try and fix that rather than just addressing the behavior. Um, whereas behavior technicians are usually working with kids who are, you know, are dealing with things like ADHD or autism and their parents aren't well equipped to be helping them out in learning how to be able to interact with basically the social systems that are set up. So you're going in and you're going like, hey, today we're going to work on not biting people. Um, <laughs> and typically you're working on a number of things at a time and then you've got like a little device where you like tick the number of times that behaviors are happening and you give like different rewards and such for good behaviors is what I understand out of it. Um, behavior technician just sounds so weird to you. It sounds like you're getting computers behave or something. Well, it's kind of, except instead of computers, it's usually children. <laughs> um, because it's a lot of it is it's dealing with um, I mean it, it is dealing with some more you know recent recent psychological theories but you know it's some of it is rooted in like you know that Skinner box stuff where it's it's positive punishment positive uh, pos uh, positive punishment positive reward negative punishment negative reward right small biological computers exactly we're all running wetware right that's what our brain is um, but yeah so you know, Psychology is an absolutely fascinating thing. Um, I, if anyone has any interest in this stuff, always feel free to hit me up. Again, I check Discord somewhat infrequently, but like I, I love talking about. It. I love getting people interested. Um, it's, it's a really tough field of study because it's working with humans, and people have called it. I've heard it called like a soft science. It's soft in that you can't get the hard numbers you want, but it's way tougher. Because everything you're working with is so squidgy, it's like trying to build a proper livable home out of, like, sand. <laughs> hey, welcome in, Pitta. 
Oh, uh, how's it going? Computers, children, pfft, same thing. In, in some ways! Um, that sounds like the kind of stuff my sister-in-law does, except she works with adults with the mental age of a child. Oh, gotcha, yeah. <laughs> Enjoying the BBB? It's, no, it's still only 3B, the threeb, not quintuple B. But yes, we are enjoying. We've we've been spending like the past like 30 minutes on me just yapping about like uh, psychological diagnosis. <laughs> but hey, I mean, you know, Celeste talks about about like anxiety and such. It's it's a game about that, so it all it all works out. <clears throat> Got her hand injured by a client of hers recently. Scary stuff, but she seems to really care about them. Yeah, and that's I. What I've realized for myself, um, because I, again, I, I went out and I got a degree in this. In fairness, that was just tacking on an extra semester to turn it from a minor into a major. Um, but, like, I got a degree in this because I'm interested in it and I enjoy helping people. What I've realized is that there's a lot of restrictions on what you can do as a therapist to help folks. And it's, <laughs> funnily enough, we've had conversations before, I'm not super religious. I considered becoming a chaplain for a while. Um, because they still often have to go get um, doctoral degrees and such. Um, uh, the uh, one of the chaplains I've spoken to had a PhD in thanatology, which is like grief counseling for people who have died um, or are approaching death. Um, and because religion is kind of a squidgy thing, they've got a lot more free reign to try and do what they think they need to do to help people. Um, so that's something I've genuinely considered um, because obviously I I have a lot of I, I have a lot of faith, and I check that in science, um, but there are also a lot of things about how things like CBT and psychotherapy... Uh, psychotherapy is a little loosey-goosey, so maybe that would work. Um, but uh, just a lot of them, I think where I tend to do well in helping people, at least in my personal life, is being able to talk to them, take a genuine interest in them, which, you know, is a bit similar to, like, Rogerian, sort of, like, uh, it's usually referred to as, like, positive psych, um, but, like, Rogerian um, psychotherapy. Um, but then also being able to talk about some of my personal life experiences and go, well, look, I can't necessarily 100% relate, but here are some ways. I'm here, I'm alive, I'm doing well, somewhat. <laughs> Here are some of the ways that I've coped with some similar things. Is that similar to what you're experiencing, or am I missing it? Um, and so, you know, that, that's, it just, you can't really do that as a therapist. That's not what therapists are there to do. Um, so, yeah. Um, master manipulator, no! Um, is this room that hard? No, it's not, but I'm, I'm also thinking very hard about other things at the same time. Been playing Terraria? Hope it's enjoyed. I still don't know much of it. I've, I've watched one of your Terraria streams partway, and that's still most of what I know about it. There are two main types of therapy uh, there, fixing and acceptance. When a therapist is sitting with you and saying, so tell me about your childhood, usually this is a form of uh, acceptance therapy where someone is struggling with something and uh, we help a person accept this as part of themselves, help them realize it's not a bad thing to feel the way they feel, and then fixing is pretty self-explanatory. You're a lot of fixing therapy, like making kids stop biting classmates. <laughs> Fixing therapy is so much easier because making someone who thinks they're okay see there's something wrong with them and that they need fixing is so much easier than making someone who thinks they're wrong realize they're okay. Inter I've I've not heard that class I've not heard it broken down into those classifications. Um, uh, which uh, that's that's interesting because there are a lot of different ways of conceptualizing it. Um, but yeah, like um, the the um, the accepting therapy, um. Uh, at least where I thought you were going with that is the, the way it was taught to me is that there are largely three branches of uh, therapy, with those being psychotherapy, which is rooted in Freudian ideas. Um, that's the, you know, let's dig into your childhood and figure out how the, you know, your stunted development has impacted you today. <laughs> um, which I think is a lot of woo woo BS, but also I will say there are some people that I've met where things have worked for them a little bit there, and I think I think there are places where it has its utility. I just also have a lot of questions about a lot of it. Um, since, you know, the original sample size was a bunch of uh, bothered Austral- uh, not Australian, a, bu a, a, bunch, a bunch of upset Austrian women that were coming to see him. Um, hey, you're back! Huzzah! Um, hope, hope it was a good hug. Um, imagine this changing behavior would be easier than changing a person's internal feelings. If is that true? Well, so that's okay. So, you've got you've got Freudian psychotherapy, which is very like yeah. you've got 
uh, Rogerian psychotherapy, which I really love, which is what I thought Alyssa was going for with um, acceptance, because it's it's based on the concept of the therapist is not there to provide advice. The therapist there is there to be a listening voice who will ask pointed questions that will help the person come to their own conclusions about how to fix it, because you can't you can't jam people into being fixed um, or there's not even necessarily a fixing. The concept of being fixed in a lot of ways has to stem from the individual themselves. So a lot of that is, oh, so you feel that you're having low moods a lot. I can understand that. Um, what are some things that you do to help with those moods? And you're just sort of, you're you're asking leading questions. It, it's, I guess I would almost like equate it to like the Socratic method of teaching in a lot of ways. And then you've got cognitive behavioral therapy, which is one of the more popular ones today, which is basically saying, hey, thoughts and feelings turn into behaviors, behaviors turn into patterns. So let's try to have people learn tools to disrupt the thinking process. Because while behaviors are things that are fairly easy to change in some cases, so I would agree with that, uh, Sigma, um, but the thing is, if the root belief, if the root thoughts and feelings are still there, it tends to resurface. So, yeah, it's, it's easy to give people candy, you know, to reward a good behavior and give them a small slap on the wrist or, you know, shock them in some of the earlier experiments to try and extinct a behavior. But if they still have the thinking that is sort of dissonant to them and causing this distress, it typically doesn't stick. Um, there, are, there are some cases where they do stuff like that. Um, exposure therapy is often used for phobias, right? You try, you work with the person, you talk it through, but ultimately you end up tending to have to expose them to the fear so that they can sort of work through it themselves. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do so like what i remember working on with uh, my therapist is like they, they've got uh <laughs> mine had worksheets um but basically there were there was a bunch of like these are sort of cognitive distortions is what they call them so for instance catastrophizing um the sort of if you ask most people what's the worst that could happen they will come up with some sort of fairly realistic response um, you know, what's the worst that could happen if you tried that sandwich? Um, you know, because, you know, you're going like, oh, should I eat that sandwich? You know, it's it's a treat and maybe maybe that's not, like, the greatest for me right now. Most people you ask and they go, you know, I, I feel a little bloated afterwards, I regret it later, but hopefully I enjoy it at the moment, and maybe I have to work a little harder to lose some weight. And then you've got people that will go, well, what's the worst that happens if you eat that sandwich? Well, it's going it's going to be the thing that sets me over. I'm going to start, you know, I'm not going to be able to control my eating at other times. I'm going to eat so much more. It's going to be so bad for my weight. And what if I start choking on the burger and uh, on the sandwich and so on and so forth? That's catastrophizing. That's taking a reasonable action to take, projecting about it. And instead of projecting reasonable outcomes and selecting the worst, you can just keep on going. Um. So they say, so let's talk about some tools and let's sort of talk about like, let's maybe use the framing of like what a friend would tell you the worst that could happen is and such. Um, and so it, it's, it's basically trying to come up with, okay, so here are some of the distortions that tend to be your most frequent cognitive patterns. Let's come up with some tools that help you disrupt those patterns to deal with um, the, those thoughts when they come up again. Um, I didn't know where your dog was, so I looked for her, and apparently she was <laughs> on your bed, but she's, oh, on her period, so your sheets are messed up. Ah, oh, no. That's, I, I do remember, I, uh, a friend of mine owns two cats, and she was so panicked at one point of, like, where's my cat? Where did my cats go? They were just under her covers, but were completely quiet and still, so they just, like, appeared out of nowhere after she was panicked for, like, 30 minutes. Ah, uh, animals. Sometimes they, they make us suffer so. Um, well, a lot of therapy is actually just getting to know someone, making someone feel comfortable around you. It's pretty difficult to help someone completely change the way they live, see themselves if you don't know each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, be, it's being a listening voice, and it's like Rogerian psychotherapy tends to crank that up to 11. CBT has some different philosophies about like what tools uh, to provide them and doesn't require maybe as much of the personalization. Psychotherapy, Freudian stuff, it's kind of doing its own thing. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Joking, dying, or suffocation? Yep. No, exactly. Like that. That's that's that type of type of thing. It's been two hours. Eh. 
<laughs> like watching people who are scared of snake spiders get exposed to friendly snake spiders and get less scared. Yeah. Uh, may maybe that's mainly because I find snakes and spiders to be cool. They are cool. I still am a little terrified, but not phobic of them. Um. Why don't they come when you call them <laughs> when you lost them? Because they know they're teasing you. This tarantula was super nice, never bit, like shaking his booty while eating. Aw. Like snakes, spiders, no no. Yeah, I'm yeah, I I tend to be more okay with snakes than spiders, but why are folks noticing your color? I don't know. It I guess it stands out a fair bit. Um, and, I mean, you tip you tend to be, or you were usually on like the more green end of the spectrum. So it went from like very sort of like soft color to a much more like in your face color. Um, I know it's been two hours, but we're having fun, or I'm having fun. Hopefully, you all are too. Otherwise, you should leave. <laughs> Not as a like get out, but like a what what why why would you torture yourself? <laughs> green end of the spectrum. Oh god. Oh right. <laughs> Oh, me completely forgetting about that. Right, because yeah, that's, it's the, I guess, yeah, red is interesting. Yeah, I, I wasn't even thinking about that. Because yeah, it like, the, the color is, it's a fairly bright one, and it stands out a lot. Um, she was acting like she did something wrong because she knows she can only lay on her own blankets and she felt like laying on mine, but I get it, you're on, yeah, fair. I play Celeste, all I do is torture myself. You know, that's a fair point. <laughs> I can't. Re I'm terrible. I'm terrible with linking name and sentiment. But uh, I remember someone was saying that they felt that Celeste played them more than they played Celeste. That seems to be a <laughs> Celeste does seem to be something that a lot of people feel is a a a nice form of torture. But. Damn. Oh. Like, okay. Actually being a little a little more serious about how we're doing this, I think we want to jump straight up so that we're not eliminating ba basically we want to get the one that I keep getting by dashing upright. We want to get that when we're doing like a straight dash to the right to get through. It's played you for 270 hours. I think I'm still I think I'm still sub 60, but yeah, it, it's a, it, I can understand how people spend a lot of time on it. It's last Rain World Baba, we all give Johan, all we give Johan is yard game. Meh. All we give Johan is hard games. Yep. <laughs> but, many of them are fun. Oh, and Lingo. Lingo is still, man, we need to do more Lingo streams. Like, why is it that everyone shouts and clamors for Baba, but not more Lingo? Lingo, my beloved. L Baba, my beloved. <laughs> no, it's, I, I definitely, I, I need to do more Lingo. I think I need to do, I, I still need to check with Lumery because I don't want to, I don't want to finish, don't, don't want to finish his, uh, his level without him there, but also my streaming schedule has become a lot more restrictive. Um, so I might just, you know, pick up some other levels? Okay. Oh no, just slightly too early. I have too few brain cells to comprehend lingo. I think that's fair. It's I I still feel like it requires fewer brain cells than Baba does, but it does ask a lot of us. Me shouting in the corner. March. Yes. This is very true. I want more Marsh as well. There's just so many things. It's like, I don't know. At the very least with Celeste, I'm like, I am actively in the middle of this. Ah! But, yeah. Would you rather have every single food and drink you ever put into your mouth be spicy? Like, not extremely spicy, but still not enjoyable on a daily basis spicy, or have completely no taste at all? Ooh, I think definitely, I think definitely the spicy, as someone who enjoys spicy a lot, which would, that uh, would make for a very interesting, so, it would need, it would, yeah, so it would need to be, man, yeah, no, it's, a, a no taste, I think, well, actually, with no taste, I might be able to eat more vegetables. Ooh, I will need to think on that one a little bit more. 
Marsh, guess <laughs> that might count as a hard game. Yeah, but it's it's it feels like within within my uh within my zone. Um, Simba boss normal mode Marsh. Hell yeah. Um, your own saliva spicy. See that sounds good to me. Water spicy less so. Um, and like it, it would it yeah that would actually restrict my diet a fair bit. I think I may actually go for like the more bland because. There's a- I- I have a lot of, like, texture flavor issues, so it might be something where I would be able to expand my diet, even if I wouldn't be able to taste stuff, and who knows, maybe that would also help me eat less, because <laughs> then I wouldn't do it as, like, a boredom activity. Yeah, maybe- maybe not being able to taste stuff would actually be my superpower. I- I think I- I think I would rather not be able to taste, even though I love spicy stuff. Um, because, like, I- I hate the, like, vaguely- like, if it's only, like, lightly spicy- I- I hate, like, half flavors, I guess. Um, who tasting makes your life bearable? Yeah, and it's, I- I like tasting things a whole lot, so, like, I'm- I'm loath to give it up, but I could probably be a lot healthier if I <laughs> couldn't taste things. Um, eventually you would just get completely desensitized to it. Well, I'm- I'm assuming- I'm assuming that there's some aspect of this where it adjusts, because otherwise, like, what- what most people would consider not, like, daily tolerable spicy would not, uh, would not be any issue to me. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! So we're getting there more consistently, but we need to get an extra dash in here somewhere. So we do this. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Apparently dash up and to the right, but yeah, that's how we do it. Um, because so I, I'm assuming it's got some sort of magically adjusting thing. Because yeah, otherwise you could just like uh, get rid of um, get rid of uh, certain uh, taste receptors. I had a feeling that might happen with the choking. Yeah, yeah. But it's fine because we're getting cl closer. Um, <laughs> uh, spice isn't a taste; it's a feeling. Meaning you could still experience spice even if you can't taste. I believe that's actually. Incorrect. I believe that spice is one of the flavors that we have receptors for. Um, in fact, there are people who can't taste things that put salsa on anything like strawberries. <laughs> I'm I'm fairly confident that spice is spice. Is, there's still nerve endings and whatnot, um, and I believe it is counted as a flavor. But I am not. I'm not. Admittedly, I'm not 100% sure on that, but. Oh my god! <laughs> Isn't spicy just plain flavor in a lot of ways, yeah. Greetings and salutations! Welcome in, Aya. Uh, happy belated birthday. I'm sorry I was not checking Discord at the time, so I did not see it, but there is a lovely little... lovely little gif there. A, a gif gift. Gua times two. Gua times three. Bump. 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 Oh! <gasps> okay! So now I should du dash into the dust bunnies, right? Boop. There we go! Good karma! You're gonna sleep? Alright! Good night, Aya! Thanks for popping in! Get good rest. Wah! Surely some good karma. Should make bee stew soon again. Aw, oh, yeah! Love a good stew. Bee side complete. Goodbye, Mr. Oshiro. We've done a heart ultra into the buddies. Uh. <laughs> 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 oh, well, hey, we didn't hit 3,000. <laughs> so, that's something. Okay. <laughs> Oh, love that. Um, so yeah, we'll 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 take a break and then we'll come back with Rain World for um oh hey, we can even well we're actually switching over early enough. We'll probably have like two ish hours of Rain World. We'll see. Now Forb <laughs> Yes. But Forb will be a Wednesday thing. Um Well I wasn't looking, can you please repeat it so I can see? Oh my god. <laughs> 
Don't like beef, but I made it so good. Awesome. Um, try one A dashless. <laughs> At some point, what 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 I have what I have said basically, I'm going to do all of the B sides and then farewell. After that, I think Celeste. I, after that, I think I'm not committing to anything more Celeste, other than I do want to do a um, uh, God, it's either uh, it's Celeste Net. I think the 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 one where we can have multiple people in the same instance. Um. So that that is one that um that w we i will commit to um anything else that's uh do strawberry jam with cnet <laughs> um but yeah so that's um that is something i will want to do a stream of that once i've completed farewell um anything else i may fire it up occasionally just like i used to <laughs> fire up jump king occasionally it, it will go into the rotation of i may occasionally muck about with it but um but yeah, that 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 is my level of commitment. Is I want to do all the B sides. I will go through farewell and then uh, some Celeste net, and we'll see how much we muck about with it after that. Um, we can join Johan in the game and definitely not throw him around, and troll him. Oh, definitely not. I, surely, surely that's not what you all would do to me. Um, but yeah. Um, so we'll take one quick moment before we go on break because I now I'm I'm bothered now of like spicy. Um. So spi so okay, spicy as a flavor. To do <laughs> farewell before seven B. Hmm. Um. Or actually, hold up. So. Wikipedia, five flavors. Oh, okay. So spice is not a specific, specific taste. So it's sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and savory. Okay, yeah. Also known as umami. Um, but yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, right, because it's, it's still, it's your nerve endings, it's just not your taste buds, because that's, that's the person who, like, had capsaicin and then, like, the, it's not menthol, I don't think, but, like, the, the chemical that, like, gives the spiciness to mint, the, like, the sort of cold spicy, um, so they got, you know, hellfire in the form of frozen, frozen hot pain um i kind of want to try that at some point <laughs> but okay fair enough fair enough you got me Alyssa. um yeah but there, there's different types of pain your body can feel different types oh uh one other quick little interesting thing you know when like you stub your toe or you like uh hit your arm or something and you get the like ouch and then you te we tend to like apply pressure to it um where it's like we press on it and it feels better I believe it's been a little while. Biopsych was not my strong suit, but I believe why that works is because your um, the 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 pain receptors in nerves and the like deep touch receptors in nerves utilize the same pathways um, in your nervous system to send that signal to your brain to process as ow. So by applying pressure, you're basically providing an alternate signal that helps disrupt the pain signal, is my understanding of it. Again, been a while. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, stuff like that is very interesting of like how different receptors you can you can do weird stuff to muck about with that. Treating our body and our brain like a computer and hardware where, <laughs> where you can hack it. Um, and eating spicy food, your brain goes, heck yeah, endorphins, yeah. Like your body is telling you, yo, this is bad, don't eat it. But your brain goes, yum for the tongue. Yep. I mean, capsaicin is literally a defense mechanism. We're just like, ooh, <laughs> we want to put that on everything. Um, just cut the nerves in your neck so I don't feel pain. Yay! Ah, we love we, we love getting rid of our central nervous pathways. Um, so, would I rather be stuck in a dream, unable to wake up on my own? The only way to escape out of this dream is by completing a giant lingo course that would take an hour to complete if you knew all the answers, or be stuck in a dream and the only way to escape is by reading through 10 entire dictionaries of languages of your choosing. Oh, that's really tough. Oh, that's really, really tough. Um, because on the one hand, I really enjoy lingo, and that would be a really cool concept, but there have absolutely been lingo puzzles that I do not think I would have been able to get on my own without basically brute forcing them. So I think... I think it would be the reading the dictionaries on the basis of I... That's a, I know I could complete that. I'm, I'm confident I could complete that in 
like like I'm not going to get a DNF. I'm stuck in the dream forever. So yeah, I I think I think I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with um the dictionaries. But that's that's an interesting one, and I I think I would prefer the lingo one, but I would then get stuck forever. <laughs> Went over to another streamer, had him play through all of Armed with Springs. Oh, nice. He saw 15 out of the 16 levels on his own. Ayo, gave him cheat code to skip level 12. That's awesome. Good good on him. Uh, that's I'm glad to see other folks doing Armed with Springs. That's super fun. Lingo is only an hour. No, it's an it's an hour if you have it's an hour of typing the stuff in, not even with the thinking. Um, yeah. Risk of getting stuck in your dream forever is a big issue. So it's like, I can finish the dictionaries. What dictionaries am I choosing? <laughs> Urban? Oh, God, no. Um, you have your crown back. Yay! Um, because it's November 4th, intriguing. You could always brute force the puzzles. No, you could, but I think, I think that, I think that the dictionaries would take less time to brute force. Um, behold, Nobo has prime. At this point, half of the people who have ever played the game are streamers I've played into playing it. <laughs> See, and that's what advertising companies don't get. Instead of paying for all of these ads, just go into streamers' chats and say, hey, do the thing. <laughs> but being friendly about it. Or so Johan to read Urban Dictionary equals Johan Dix Lingo instead. No, no, if it was Urban Dictionary, I would learn some things, genuinely. But there is still the potential problem of the Urban Dictionary is one that actually grows. Like, I would want, I would want physical dictionaries so that, like, there's an endpoint. Um, who would do that? Right, exactly. <laughs> who would do that, Silver? Um, we would learn some things and also be scarred for life. I'm, I'm going to be real, Sigma. It would not scar me more than I have already scarred myself. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? A lot of things. We've had, we've had a big old detour into, like, uh, psychological diagnosis. Currently, we're talking about a combination of, um, a would you rather... Be stuck in a you're stuck in a dream. The only way to exit is to either complete um a a lingo level that if you knew all of the answers, literally just entering the answers would take you an hour to complete, or read um from cover to cover ten dictionaries of different languages. Um I think those are the main ones. Oh, and uh bullying bullying streamers into playing games that you made, which I <laughs> tongue-in-cheek support um in the same way that the tongue-in-cheek uh, the bullying is meant tongue-in-cheek um deep no it's i look i'm i'm not here to be raunchy and lewd but i look man i i interact with people and i have gone down rabbit holes i'm aware of what's on urban dictionary i don't think it's worse than some of the things that i have heard and or witnessed um, lingo level. At least it's stimulating. And oh, that's what I thought, except for, again, I'm worried about, like, having to brute force own answers, whereas, like, the the dictionary? Like, I can I can deal with that, right? Like, that's that's a fairly determined end. Um, but yeah, it's like, I would have more fun with the lingo level, but I, I think I would go with the dictionaries. And so, what ten dictionaries would I go for? Um, knows what's happening to Henry the Sixteenth? Wait a moment. Um, <laughs> forehead play? Oh dear. Um, well, it's, I, I'm trying to think of, like, you could probably, like, okay, rude answer would be, like, go for, like, conlangs that have, like, very small dictionaries. Um, or, um, or even just languages that don't have a lot. Or, like, well, it's, so, I assume there has to be a dictionary that exists, right? Um, because there's also, there's things like, um, inuktitut syllabics, right? Um, which, as, like, that writing system, which was developed by Christian mercenaries for uh, some of the, like, Inuit and Inuktitut peoples. Um, I don't know if there's an actual dictionary there, or I... No, actually, I know there are some, but they aren't very big and they aren't comprehensive. So, like, I don't know, like, you could do some stuff there. Uh, yeah, what counts as a language? Does it have a group that primarily speaks it or not? A language is a language. No! <laughs> If stuck in lingo, you just put in every dictionary word. Therefore, it would take less time as long as you get stuck fewer than 10 times. But this is assuming we don't know anything about this lingo level. All of the lingo, like, it's it's supposed to... It's supposed to have, um, you know, like, actual, actual words um, as answers. But also consider, I believe sometimes it's been proper nouns, which wouldn't appear in a dictionary, Sigma. So, um, you know, you, you don't... 
you don't actually know for sure, and they could also, they could muck about and come up with words, potentially. So, it's just your anxiety speaking. Well, yes, but that's, that's, that's part, that's part of uh, how I think about these questions and answer them. But yeah, I, I think I would stick with the dictionaries. And like, sure, let's use it as an opportunity for self-improvement. Let's assume that we recall reading it, or like, some aspect. We'll, we'll go with the like, learn Japanese while you sleep video theory, right? Um, so yeah, like, um... If I did free time to memorize a new language, partially, right, yeah, because also, like, dream time works very differently, so, uh, also vaguely concerned. Now, see, here's the funny thing that I hadn't even thought about. If it is a dream, what's to guarantee that their actual, um, what's to guarantee that their actual, um, actual, if they're actually correct? Like, am I going to be reading, if, if I go for, like, Japanese and Mandarin, am I actually going to be reading a proper Mandarin dictionary? Or is it going to be like my concept of what the Mandarin dictionary would look like in the dream? <laughs> is grammar a part of language, the dictionary? No, right, it is it is just the it is just the vocab, but like that could still be quite useful. And like you could be sort of learning from it. A lot of dictionaries will sometimes use stuff in a sentence, right? So like you could pick up the grammar and such. Um but yeah, no, like that's that's the whole thing of like, is this is this a diction is this a real dictionary or your imagined version of it? That was the case. Pick ten esoteric languages you have no clue about. Yeah, ten basically empty books. You just come up with some weird stuff. It doesn't even need to be real languages. You're just like, ah, yes, I learned Floridian. Um, because I've definitely had dreams like that where like I'm the dream is about using a language that doesn't make sense and like. I don't wake up being able to speak it, but I'm very convinced that I am speaking some other language. Um, but yeah, so like like actual languages, I would want to like okay, you, let's let's take it as real 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 languages, real dictionaries. You actually remember them? Probably be Mandarin and Japanese, Arabic, um, Hebrew, um, Russian, um, probably um, Chinook, um, Spanish. German. Um, what else? Um, I don't, I still haven't identified, like, an African language that I'm super interested in learning, but I, I would like them, because, like, I, ultimately, I would love to be able to, like, learn passably a language from every major linguistic group, but, uh, um, but some, so, some sort of African language, I don't know which one. I, admittedly, that's, Africa is a, uh, very big gap in a lot of my world knowledge. Um, and then, oh, what, what's like one, one last good one? Oh, uh, I know I'm, oh, Basque. I would love, I would love to learn, um, I would love to learn some Basque just because that's so weirdly linguistically isolated. Yep, th that's still about the dictionary question. We were, we were just nailing down which dictionaries. Ooh, would I rather say, oh, ho, ho, ho. I think bitch. <laughs> I've, I've. I've come to uh, hear that as a form uh, uh, a, a form of endearment and affection from a number of friends. <laughs> um, so it's 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 one that being applied to me, I, I take in a positive context. Um, <laughs> um, not global wise, but language wise. Yeah, like like try and try and get a whole bunch of different um, things. Like I know that like Japanese and Mandarin aren't super different, but like. Those are those are both ones I would like to learn. I think sort of work together. Um, <laughs> bro, hit me with the I think, bitch. <laughs> Jailed. I feel like the F word used to be serious, and nowadays it's just silly more than anything. In a lot of ways, like it depends on the context. But yeah, like e even legitimately, in the context that I've gotten used to it, like I am not going to call someone oh bitch, just like without knowing them and such. But like I, in a lot of my like very close friendships, I have. I have simply accepted that I'm going to be a affectionately called. <laughs> so, to me, I, I, you know, that that one, sure, whatever. Um, he said the word. I said I said it quite clearly earlier, but all right, <laughs> we've we've done our little chat wind down. Um, we're gonna take our break and then we're gonna come back with some Rain World, <laughs> affectionately called Sluthan. I don't think I have been yet, but. <laughs> Um, but I, I like, I, actually, no, I think I have been affectionately called, yeah. 
I mean, F is something that you use about yourself. B is primarily used towards other. Except, again, not in the context that I've heard it. Like, I, I've legitimately heard both. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like, it, 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 as with a lot of aspects of language, it really depends, like, the subculture, which I'm going to say you can even have, like, a subculture within a particular friend group, right? It really depends on the cultural environment, the social environment. Uh, fun facts. Apparently Windows 12 is supposed to be entirely cloud-based. Uh, unless you're a bit uh, dad, then B is something you use primarily primarily towards the dishes. Ah, uh, yes. Music is great. Okay. Thank y'all. This has been fantastic. We are going to be taking a three-minute break. This is a fantastic opportunity to remember that you have a corporeal form. You should take care of it. Stand up. Stretch. Grab some water. Grab a snack. Um, if you have meds that you need to take, and now is an appropriate time to do so, this is a fantastic opportunity, since we'll be going into, like, an hour plus of some rain world, so do it now before <laughs> before you get sucked in. Um, if you have something else that you need to transition to in your day, this is also a great opportunity before you get pipelined into the rain world. Um, uh, remember to look outside and rem remember that there's a wonderful world out there, be it day or night. You are not locked into just watching the little ink blob. Remember that there's great things out there. But yes, we will be back in about three minutes, so ta-ta for now, but we will catch you on the flip side. Back in a bit.